Welcome in everybody, my name is K Sam and on today's video I'm going to be showing you guys the easiest way to draw some stylized characters. We're going to be going over things like different shape sizes, we're going to go over stuff like posing your characters, and then we'll also talk about variations using triangles, squares, and circles, and all of that good stuff. Now if it's your first time here, welcome into the K Sam crew. My name is K Sam and I'm a full-time uh, Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, teaching everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, to all things related to character design, and and I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. So if you guys are interested in some free art education or you just want to hang out with my dog who is KO'd over there, make sure to leave a follow out here on Twitch and also like and subscribe if you're watching from YouTube. Today, what we're going to be covering is a little bit of some stylization of drawing our characters. Now we have here a male and a female reference. I think these are both great references. And we're going to again talk about a few things. We're going to talk about the sizing of our characters, small, medium, large, uh, stuff like that. Uh, we're going to talk about posing and then we're going to talk about shape design too. Okay, so let's go ahead and put one of these away and we'll start tackling here this first character. Um, that we have here. We have a very kind of strong male boxy character and some of the things that I'm seeing here are going to be the standard uh, the standard box shapes, the standard square motif for this character. They're a pretty sturdy character. They're probably a good defensive character and overall um, they're a character that I feel like stands their ground and that's a lot of coming from the shape design that we see there. Um, but we're also going to take a look at some of the, you know, the proportions as well of this character. We can kind of see if we take a look at the, the design here of this character, you can really start to find some of those small, medium, large uh, shapes going in here all across the board. So we have here, for example, notice how when you take a look at the gear, right, you'll have here some of these shapes like that. Then you'll have kind of these contrasting square shapes. And so you'll see some of these motifs across all of the design of this character. Um, you know, a lot of these square shapes to kind of help emphasize what we're looking at here. And even in some of the arm anatomy as well, too, you'll have here kind of that shoulder, um, which will be a small shape right there. Then we'll have here the upper arm, which will kind of be this medium length shape. And then you have here the length of like the actual uh, forearm there, which will be a large shape. So you can kind of see how the artists who are working on these designs are really incorporating a lot of different elements here of shape and size to be able to come up with some interesting designs for their characters. Now, what I'm going to do with you guys is I'm going to be working on some posing here with you guys. And I've actually kind of already did a rough start here, kind of just a rough, loose sketch of a pose using some of the built form that we have. So I'm going to be kind of building off of that. And for those of you who maybe have missed a, uh, some of the previous streams that we have here covered, basically what we're going to be talking about today is, again, a bit of the anatomy. But I'm also going to show you guys a few te uh, tips and techniques here that I have for locking in general proportions and all that good stuff. One of the first and easiest things that I think works really well for locking in proportions is just finding the halfway point there of the torso. And the cool thing is for, for most um, human centric designs that are that that usually tend to lean towards semi realistic or realistic, um, you'll find here that the wrist the wrist right here and also the uh, greater trochanter which will sometimes be here at kind of that midway point of the hips usually lands at about the halfway mark here of the height of the character now it does vary and obviously you know depending on the positioning and stuff you can change this but for the most part this is kind of a good landmark to start off with because from there you can then say from this halfway point to this halfway point the bottom of the knees are going to be here so about a fourth here a fourth of the distance of the total height and then from here on this mid portion is also going to be where roughly the pectorals the nippies are going to be like right about here okay so got kind of a nice easy way just to lock in your general proportions for your characters um i would say oh and thank you for dropping that uh for uh la Masa verse let me go ahead and pin that um okay I'm going to pin that message there. So that way, for those of you who want to grab access to all the links, that's going to be pinned on the top of the chat. But let me see if it works one more time. Yeah, the links don't work today. Unfortunate. All right. So I'm going to go ahead now and kind of just move here that general proportion. Uh, maybe I'll do it on this side here like that. And then let's go in now and maybe start piecing out some of the character design here, um, some of the anatomy for this character. But all right, let's go ahead and get this one going. 
So when it comes to kind of drawing out these different types of characters and different types of shapes, oftentimes I find that, you know, you can really start off with some of the simple shapes there. So when I first did this, all I really did was I said, okay, well, this is where I want that torso to be. Go do a little bit of a torso structure there. Put a little bit there of the pelvis, right? Find that gesture of the legs. And then from here, figure out how wide do we want the... Um, the shoulders to be and all of that stuff now What's really cool about playing with stylized shape design and stuff too is that you can really push a lot of the shapes and forms so Interestingly enough with larger characters even though they may appear much larger their actual bone structure is actually pretty consistent um, I would say so You can keep some of the skeleton in the rib cage kind of like this and then from here, you know, you can say like, okay, well, if that's going to be this wide and here's going to be where the shoulder is going to be, then you're going to add here a lot of extra muscle perhaps for the deltoids, right? And that'll kind of make the shoulders appear wider. Um, and then maybe we'll also add in here the lat muscles and all of that stuff too. So kind of building up on the skeletal anatomy and then adding volume from there can also be a nice and kind of cool way to be able to give your characters more shape and more design. So let me go in first and let's just kind of start drawing out some characters here. And then from there, we'll, uh, we'll start working on, uh, on the rest of these components. Um, but yeah, also welcome in everybody making Valorant art stream. Yeah, I know I've been, <laughs> I've been, I've been, I might be a little hooked on Valorant. I'm not going to lie, but it's a good game. It's a, a good game that I wish I was better at. Oh, thank you for the sub too, Gamehead. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Sheesh. So we're going to go here. When I'm drawing out this character, um, I'm going to be going in and kind of giving him um, a lot of boxy shapes to kind of start off with. Even the head here, I'm going to start off with some simple boxy shapes. And then we're going to kind of build off of these forms and stuff too. Now, I'll talk a little bit about anatomy today, but I'll be mostly focusing on the uh, the visible anatomy here. Uh, ones that I think will kind of lead to the most uh, lead to the most visibility in terms of actual sh uh, shape design and all of that stuff. So let's go ahead and kind of work our way down there. Also, welcome in uh, everyone who's coming in. Let me get some uh, drink some drink some tea today. Um. But yeah, hopefully everyone is doing well today. It is day 30. And uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, uh, today and only today, the the sub goal is only five, uh, five subs. Every five subs now will unlock a new sheet. Normally, it's every 10 subs. But because today is going to be the last day of my boot camp, I wanted to kind of, uh, you know, give you guys a, a nice send off there for those of you who wanted to grab those final resources. And also for those of you who are just trying to catch up. So today and only today, they're only it's going to be five. Uh, every five subs will be unlocking a new sheet. So thank you for all the support out here. We got a lot of sheets too. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually lay out here first before we get into anything else. I want to always lay out the clavicle. And I always tell you guys that the clavicle for me personally is one of the most important bones in the upper body. People think the rib cage is very important and it is. Um, but I feel like oftentimes people already understand the rib cage and the shape of it. But what people don't necessarily understand is how the structure here of the clavicle works. Now, the reason why I think the clavicle is really important is because the clavicle is actually a major connector for so many parts of the body. It's a major connector for the neck, major connector for the, for the torso, the pectoral muscles, and even, uh, the shoulder. So it, it basically connects three uh, three of the major portions there of the human body. And so by understanding how the clavicle works, you can really start to piece in some of these components and the clavicle, you know, I always lay it out here kind of like a bow, bow shape there, uh, from the center line here of the torso. And then we're going to kind of build off from that. Now I'm going to go in here and just start adding in some trap muscles for this character. I want to make him a bit more of like a bigger character, like imagining if this character was just like massive, a very muscular character, you know? Um, and so for this one here, we're going to kind of really exaggerate some of the muscle groups while still retaining some of the frame here of the character. Um, but yeah, welcome in everyone who's coming in here. Thank you for the follow as well. Washi Tanyu, welcome in. 
So we're going to go here and exaggerate those trap muscles, right? Uh, and then we're going to really just bring those back all the way here to kind of the ends there of the clavicle. That's going to be kind of the acromion process. Now, the trap muscles, interestingly enough, actually connect also to the front side here um, of the clavicle. So do keep that in mind. Uh, but there is going to be kind of a gap right here between where the neck muscles connect and where those trap muscles connect as well, too. So it's not going to be like a super clean connection, but it's good to kind of know where these connections are. So the trap muscles do originate from the back side of the neck, but they're going to also connect to the scapula. They're going to connect here to the front side here of the clavicle and create some of that rounded form. Uh, but now as we get lower and lower here, let's kind of work our way now into building up some of the other muscles of the, uh, the torso. So here, um, when you have a very kind of muscular character and stuff, you're basically going to be adding in a lot of volume uh, to these major muscle groups. So for example, the pectoral muscles is going to be kind of a great place to be adding those muscle groups in. Now, before we even add the rest of the pectoral muscle, usually what I like to tell people is to focus first on the deltoid muscle because this muscle actually overlaps um, the portion there of the um, the pectorals. And so if you have a good understanding of where the... Uh, where the deltoids are going to be, this is actually going to be more important than, you know, uh, it's more important for, for placing the arm and figuring out how the arm works. So here, obviously, I'm going to be exaggerating these forms, and I'm going to try to go and utilize a lot of boxy shapes here. So instead of kind of adding in kind of a, a simple taper for the shoulder, I'm going to kind of give him maybe a little bit more of like a boxy-like structure, uh, like so. And again, for this one, I am going to be mentioning the anatomy with you guys, uh, for you guys, but I will also kind of be simplifying it out here to kind of more generalized shapes. So that way, for those of you who maybe are not super familiar with some of the anatomy, that's okay. You can kind of just follow along here by utilizing a lot of the basic shapes that we're kind of leveraging here on today's stream. So here for the for the deltoid, again, I'm looking at kind of these boxy shapes, uh, kind of this uh, kind of like this type of cap shape here that kind of situates itself on top of the shoulders. Uh, let me ask you guys in the chat, actually, for those of you who are watching here, do you want me to go over? Um, do you want me to go over what these muscles are connecting to or do you want me just to focus on the shapes today? Because I can do both. I can definitely, you know, lock in all the details for you guys and talk about all the muscle connections. But if you guys are more interested in just some, some of the overall shapes, then we can kind of focus on that. Let me know in the chat real quick. Okay. Apparently, <laughs> apparently everyone's just saying yes. Okay. So you guys want, I see, I see. So you guys are basically telling me for the last day of the boot camp, you guys want me to go all out. You guys want me to give you everything, the final recap of all the things that we've done, give you all the info, just brain overload today. Is that what you guys are telling me? Yes, I think so. All right. It sounds like it. Okay. In that case, um, I'll talk about it moving forward here, but basically the, the deltoid muscle, uh, these muscles are going to be connecting to the clavicle again, connecting to the acromion process over here, also connecting to the backside of the scapula, and then also here connecting to the, the humerus bone. Now, one of the subtle things I want to kind of mention to you guys is how overlaps work, right? Really pay attention to overlaps here because these are some of the things that can create depth and volume for your characters. Right. So take a look here how the trap muscles overlaps here, that deltoid, because the deltoid, again, also has some connections on the backside there of the scapula. Do I perhaps teach online courses? Um, I do. It's free and it's on YouTube. So uh, that is my course. I have a YouTube. I have a course over there where I teach and it's all going to be on my YouTube channel, which I realize the command doesn't work for. So instead, go to the pinned comment. Um, on the top of the chat there and you'll be able to grab that bruh why does stream elements bully me today um, but yes that I, I do teach out here on twitch um, though my course is not a course necessarily that you have to pay for but um, if you do want to grab the resources that are offline and all the additional worksheets uh, those are all available to my subscribers yeah so everybody who's subscribed to my stream basically um, you will get access to all the worksheets, but otherwise, um, you don't have to subscribe. You can just come out to my live streams. Um, 
but yeah if you guys want to if you guys want to i'd actually really appreciate if you guys subscribe to my youtube channel uh we've been we've been growing a lot over there and it's been a it's been super awesome to to be able to help other people out on a platform that maybe they would not have come over to twitch or realized that it's there yeah thank you to my mods I know the links are crazy today. Um, so here, let's get into talking about arms and we're going to get, we're going to get kind of huge here with these arms, but the next muscle group that I'm going to talk about, that'll really add a lot of volume, um, for the character design is really going to be the bicep muscle. And you know, the bicep muscle basically is a muscle that connects to a couple of things, but it's basically going to be originating and connecting kind of near the humerus bone here and i think the corico i always forget it's like the coracoid process i think um, but basically the point here is that this muscle is going to be a nice juicy muscle here that will either be flexed when the arm is bent or stretched when the arm is down now in this case right here this one is going to be more of a i would say a, a kind of a somewhat stretched out muscle here um, and then this the the bicep is actually going to connect to one of the two bones in the in the in the forearm here in this case it's going to be connecting to the radius bone okay now the radius bone is um, as the name implies radius kind of uh, rotating there like a circle a radius of a circle the radius bone of the forearm is really meant to help do this type of twisting motion here and allow for this twisting motion uh of the uh what's it called of the of the forearm there so keep that in mind and let's kind of go in here now and kind of piece in some of the other muscle groups now the other muscle that i want to talk about is actually going to be none other than the uh, ridge muscles which is actually going to be kind of wrapping around here like so and this muscle group is going to be this chunky muscle which actually helps create some of the uh, the volume there of the arm. Now, obviously, when you're drawing these out, you don't have to draw out every single muscle group. So usually what I'll do is I'll kind of just pick out a few of the lines here uh, to kind of keep and to help showcase here the rest of the muscle in the form of the arm. Um, you love my YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for the sub. Appreciate subscribing on, on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. And uh, would you be back on Twitch in June? Uh, no, no, I'll be back next week. <laughs> I'm not going to be gone that long. That's crazy. No way, gone for two months off of Twitch. I feel like if I'm gone for that long, you guys are going to forget who I am. <laughs> but no, I won't be gone that long. Uh, but let's see here. Now we're going to go down and let's kind of uh, start piecing out the rest of the muscle groups here. Now, again, um, I'm just kind of being very blocky here and kind of exaggerating a lot of the form because I feel like it's, you know, it's... Uh, it's good to be able to kind of do some of these and kind of pull around with some of the shapes and see what we can kind of come up with, right? Uh, what if you're all muscle? I mean, if you're all muscle, and this is great, this is going to be, this is going to be you. Unless you're saying you have no bones. If you're saying you have no bones, um, then, well, <laughs> unfortunately, muscles connect to bones. So if you're all muscle, no bones, you're basically just a bunch of meat on the ground. Uh, let's see here. When did I start streaming? I started streaming uh, not too long ago, like 30 minutes ago, actually. Let's see here. Uh, but I was going to mention something to you guys. Oh, right. Really quick, guys. I do, I do run ads on my stream every hour, by the way. And so if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. Those ads do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. But if you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a prime sub out here. But either way, thank you for the support. And I hope to see you guys after, um, after the ad break. All right, but we're going to go in here like that. We're just kind of exaggerating again, really exaggerating a lot of these muscle groups here. Uh, and then here, I'm going to go in now and actually start piecing in. This is where I'm going to start adding in uh, those kind of bicep muscles that we talked about earlier. Uh, or not the bicep, sorry, the pectoral muscles here. And so I'm kind of just going in here, really exaggerating a lot of the shapes, kind of exaggerating a lot of the form. And oftentimes what really makes a character look larger than life um, is actually going to be the lap muscles on the back. So you really want to make a character that looks huge and feels huge. Um, give them some lap muscles because that'll also actually widen some of the torso and the shape design there of the torso anatomy. So we'll go ahead and do some of that right now. I'm going to add in here some of that zigzag factor from the serratus muscles. 
uh, on this side like so. And then we'll kind of, uh, we'll, we'll bring those in. Yes, the latissimus dorsi and then the lat muscles are going to, again, come from the back side, but they're going to actually connect to the front side here of the humerus bone on the arm. But we're going to go in and kind of add in here some lat muscles, kind of just, you know, not lat muscles, sorry, the serratus muscles interweaving here with the oblique muscles. Um, and I'm going to put in a center line right here. And you can kind of see here how we're starting to build up this very muscular, almost very exaggerated character design. Um, let's see here. Um, I should do more streams. I mean, I do. I do stream a lot. Yes. You must love Twitch. You've been uploading consistently on a dedicated schedule for a few months now. I felt like you're probably definitely going to take a break longer than a month. Um, I mean, I've been streaming on Twitch for about three years, so... I think I've, I've I've been good. I know I know how Twitch works and all that stuff. But I think for me, a week long break is kind of all I need. I think a, a week long break is kind of nice and chill. Um, so here we're going to be talking right now about the rib cage section. And actually, I'd love to know for those of you guys who are watching right now, how many of you guys in the chat put an F in the chat if you've ever struggled with drawing the ab muscles, this portion here of the torso, because if so, I'll talk about that right now and I'll give you guys a bit of a breakdown. But if I find that everyone here is chilling, they're like, ah, okay, Sam, I actually don't, I'm actually okay. I know how to, I know all that stuff. Um, if you guys are good, I'm not going to go over it as much today. So I always want to check in here with you guys to, to make sure, but okay. Seems like a fair number of you guys want me to go over some of the, uh, go over some of the ab muscles today. So let's go ahead and talk about them. And thank you for the follows too. Yeah, okay. You're struggling feeling my abs. Yeah, I know. You're like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I, if I have them. Yeah, no, it's, it's tough. Having abs is tough. I've only had abs ever once in my life. And that was because I had very uh, high metabolism. Those were, those were different days. <laughs> different times. <laughs> But let's see here. How do you start with, with figuring out the abs? I think one of the best ways to figure out how to draw the abs is to one, actually understand um, some of the muscles and the bones that actually comprise the section there of the abdominal muscles, right? So right here, um, one of the first things I want to talk about is obviously going to be the rib cage. And so with the rib cage, you have here a lot of different shapes you can do with the rib cage. You can do a fanned out rib cage. You can do a tapered in rib cage. A lot of variation there. Uh, for this type of design here, for this character, I want to go for a wider rib cage like so. I'm going to land it all the way here to the 10th rib. The 10th rib is going to be this bony landmark right here you can actually find on the sides of your torso. Uh, and then that's going to be coming in really handy because it'll actually help us delineate some of the abdominal muscles. Now, what's really cool is basically the ab muscles will actually originate here roughly at about the fifth rib of the rib cage. Okay. So we're going to go from like right here, this is like the fifth rib of the rib cage, and we're going to just kind of taper it all the way down, like so, all the way down to the pelvis section right here. Okay. So you can kind of find that pelvis section, taper it all the way down here. And again, you can do a lot of variations for the ribs. You can go in this way, you can go in this way, uh, but we're going to go in for a nice V tape shaper. Or actually, you know what? No, no, no. Let's go for a boxy taper here because I think for this character, we want to go for a more boxy shape design anyways, right? So we're going to go in here, um, add in all of that, and this will kind of give us that placeholder for where we're going to start piecing in uh, some of the, the abs. Now, before we actually get into the abs, I should probably squeeze in here the other pectoral muscle. So let me go ahead and lock in the other pecs right here. Now, keep in mind here that the pec muscles are also going to be connecting to the arm as well. So they're going to be connecting to the humerus bone there. So don't forget that. Um, when I was first uh, drawing out my characters, I just assumed that the pec muscles kind of just sat right here on the torso and that was it. But they actually all kind of interweave and interlock with each other. And the pectoral muscles are a great example of a muscle group that does exactly that. So here I'm going to go kind of just place that back in um, just so that I, we can have there the shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to also draw in now the other shoulder. And, you know, I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of exaggeration as well. Uh, my mic and voice is amazing. Stop. Stop here. People are too nice today. <laughs> no, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I can assure you that my voice does not sound this good in real life. 
Do you guys actually want to hear how my voice actually sounds like without all the filters and stuff? Let me know in the chat if you guys want to actually hear um, how my voice sounds like. I'm going to tell you now, it doesn't sound like this. It sounds a lot different, actually. Show us. You guys want to hear it? Okay. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to hear it, though? Because, like, we don't have to. <laughs> We don't gotta hear it. It's okay. We can we can turn off we can you can keep the filters on. Alright. Fine. I'm only, I'm only, I'm only gonna do this today because we had we had some awesome people come in from the raid. Alright, so pause the music. I'm gonna turn off all the filters, both audio and and my my visible filter as well. But here we go. So the reason why I have a filter, by the way, is because if I don't have a filter I sometimes feel like I'm going to scare people away if you get what I'm saying. So let me show you guys. I'm going to turn everything. I'm going to turn everything off. Here we go. This is it. This is actually how I look like uh, right now. This is how I sound. But as you guys can imagine, if people come into a stream like this, they're going to get scared and be like, whoa, man, voice is too deep. Face looking too big. Man, man got unspoken riz. And so I have to put a filter on, you know, I got to kind of normalize myself just a little bit. So that way I don't, I don't scare away any, any people out here. Uh, but yeah, this is me. This is me guys. I know I look, I look sexier. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta look like the common folk out here. But there you go. That's, uh, that's me. So now I, I put all these filters on, you know, kind of pitch my voice up just a little bit. And uh, all of that stuff. Thank you for the followers to Psychopath and everyone else coming in here. Uh, in all seriousness, guys, when you guys come in here, uh, I am, I am, I am, I do teach art on here at Twitch. So hopefully you guys are enjoying today's stream so far. But yes, uh, that is my, that is my voice, my real voice out here. No, it's, it's, uh, this is my real voice, but. Or is it? I don't know. You'll have to find out when you meet me, I guess. Um, but let's go in here really quick. So um, ab muscles, right? So when we talk about ab muscles, um, all we're going to be doing right now is I'm going to be going in here first and finding that center line here of the abs. The belly button area usually lands about a third of the way down. So we're going to kind of place that right here. Imagine the belly button there, right? Uh, and then all we're going to do is we're going to find here the three sections of the abs. It's actually super easy to find them. Um, the first two sections of the abs roughly are going to either be about either above or below the second, uh, the, these, these little nubs right here of the 10th rib. So for this example here, I'm actually going to give him, I'm actually going to kind of bring it down here uh, like so. Okay. From here to here is going to be the first set of abs. And then here, all we got to do now is below the belly button, roughly, is going to be the third set of abs, right? So once you have these kind of general placements for your abs, this is where I'm going to go in now and actually start kind of refining some of the abdominal shape to give it some of the asymmetry and definition that you would normally see in an abdominal uh, muscle region. So here, I might, maybe I'll go in here like so and kind of... Uh, Add a little bit there of a taper. I'm going to connect it back here to the oblique muscles on this side, right? Like that. Um, let's go in here and keep doing that now for the rest of the muscle group. So you can kind of see here, once you understand how a lot of the... Uh, how a lot of the muscles and stuff work, you can really start to simplify some of these things out a bit more. And I think it actually makes it makes it a little bit make more sense, if that makes sense. <laughs> it makes more sense once you kind of understand how these things work, um, as opposed to just kind of drawing in what you think an ab muscle looks like, which is just, you know, like a loaf of bread, like a six pack of bread, Hawaiian rolls, Hawaiian king rolls. Um, so we're going to go in here on both sides, um, just kind of add in here some depth in here, just kind of add some overlap there. And then that's, that's really about it. That's kind of how the ab muscles work. Obviously different abs will have different types of variations. So, you know, you can obviously play around with them as well. Um, but here I'm going to kind of keep it nice and simple and you know what? I'm actually going to, I actually want to shrink up here. So a few other things too that you should keep in mind is that the upper abs usually tend to be smaller 
than the lower abs. So I'm going to kind of shape that one up a little bit so that we can kind of shrink this one down. Uh, but there you go. Um, that's kind of the abdominal muscles. Again, you can add as much or as little detail as you want. It's really up to your preference. Um, here, I'm going to keep it nice and kind of simple. I'll have most of the the muscle and form there on the outer sides as we wrap from the obliques all the way down. Uh, and then um, from there, all we really got to do now is just piece in the rest of the, the oblique muscles going in this way, tapering across the form of the, uh, what's it called? The hip bone there, also known as the aces, and we've got our, we got our abs. Um, are you basing the character off of Brimmy or is he just there as a supportive guy? Um, kind of, yeah. So I'm going to be kind of drawing Brimstone here as just a baseline to show you guys a type of character that would have a very muscular build like the one we're drawing. Uh, but I, we'll see. We'll see if I actually draw Brimstone out here or as you say, Brimmy. <laughs> I've only played, I've only been playing Valorant, uh, very recently. So I honestly don't know a lot of the characters names. So I apologize if I butcher any, uh, any of your favorite characters from Valorant. There's just so many. I mean, not as bad as League though. League has like over 150 plus characters. So I feel bad for anybody who's trying to get into League for the first time. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just too many, too many characters out there. Who do I currently main in Valorant? Um, I only play Gecko. I only play Gecko. That's that's it. Yeah. Uh, there's two characters planned to release this year. For which one? For League. League is scary. I mean, I think I think League is a great game. Um, it's a great game if you want to rage and get you know, learn how to be toxic. <laughs> but it's a definitely a game with a huge learning curve. I think most, most games are most online games that have lasted long enough, usually have a large learning curve because that's how you keep people entertained. That's how you keep people coming back in for more. Uh, but let's go back in here now and I'm going to, I'm going to piece in the other arm and let me actually get rid of some of these little muscle definitions that we have because, again, you don't have to. I'm showing you guys all the, all the lines and stuff, but you don't have to actually, you know, line up and create every single line for your, uh, for your, for your character, even if they're a muscular character. Oftentimes, less is more. And so I usually try to, you know, just showcase the muscle groups and stuff that I think are going to be uh, most important. So in this case, for example, I'd probably soften out here that transition of the deltoid muscle. Maybe I'll soften out here some of these transitions and soften out some of these, right? But less is more oftentimes. And so I would usually just say, um, if you're first starting out, it's okay. You know, learn all the muscles and draw them out. That's completely fine. But as you start to develop your skills, choose which ones you feel like are most important that you feel like will really um, help convey the character. Uh, but let me go in here now and kind of draw out this portion. Um, so we have here the arm facing this way, which means we'll have the ridge muscles here. I'll probably have the thumb side uh, kind of facing up to kind of match the pose here on this side. So we're going to kind of bring it there. We'll also have here the medial epicondyle, and then we'll have the curvature there of the forearm. And that's the flexor muscle on this side. And then last but not least, we're going to have here the tapering um, and the connection there of the extensor muscles now connecting there for the arm. Now I'm going to, I'm going to simplify the hands for now. I'm just going to draw them as boxes. So that way we can draw the rest of the, uh, the body first. And then we'll add, uh, we'll add the, uh, what's it called? We'll add the, the hands later on top of all that. So let me ask you shrink this one down just a little bit here. So that way we get some of our nice, simple proportions. Okay. It's not a toxic game. I don't know why you say that. The community is great too. <laughs> it's a, it's actually a genuinely good game. Uh, but also, EXO, thank you for hanging out here. Appreciate you coming out and bringing your viewers here. I'll have to definitely check out your streams. And uh, yeah, hopefully you have a great meal too. Thank you. And um, I'll, I'll try to keep your viewers entertained to the best of my ability. And let me know, guys, if... Uh, let me know if you guys are enjoying the stream so far. 
Um, earlier, earlier, my viewers said that they wanted me to go over all the anatomy today. So I do apologize for those of you who are uh, here and you're like, yo, man, anatomy, what is this? <laughs> but all right, let's go jump back in now and let's talk a little bit about legs this time. All right. So here's how the legs work. Um, generally speaking, when you're drawing out your legs, you want to figure out here. Um, here's the main thing. If you guys just want the bare bones, just the minimum understanding of drawing legs, here are the things that you need to know. One, the sartorius muscle right here. That's a muscle that's going to be connecting here from the asis all the way down like so. Okay. Um, two, you're going to want to understand how the knees work. So here's, here's the kneecap right here. The knees are going to be facing downward because of the positioning here of the character. Um, but let me actually add in here the rest of this. So let me add in all the muscle groups and stuff. And I'll, ta I'll tell you guys which ones are the ones that are, that are important. Um, TFL here, all of that stuff. But then two, the quad muscles are probably going to be the most important ones on the legs, at least when we were talking about the front side. Now, the quads are actually comprised of four muscles, quad meaning four. But unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for you guys, you'll only really be seeing three of them as the fourth quad muscle is actually usually um, hidden hidden in the background there. So here we're going to have, uh, we're going to have the inner quad here, also known as the vastus medialis. Then here on the, uh, on the outer side, we're actually going to have the, uh, vastus lateralis. And what's interesting about the quad muscles is that these muscles kind of have an interesting shape to them. The inner quad is a little bit lower and connects directly to the kneecap or the patella. And the outer quad here, the vastus lateralis, lateral meaning outer here, um, usually ends a little bit higher up and then kind of the tendon connects here to this kneecap. And then here in between all of that is actually going to be um, the inner quad uh, like so. Now, the thing to kind of keep in mind is that these quad muscles, again, um, it's really up to you how you want to denote them. But generally speaking, uh, these quad muscles are going to be a great way to add some curvature and asymmetry to your leg design. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of that. Uh, and then here we're going to have the TFL and the glutes and all of that stuff. Uh, those are just going to kind of wrap back down here on the leg. And there you go. Now, so that is basically the leg there. I drew out here the gluteus medius, the gluteus maximus on the bottom side there, the TFL right here, and then here's the greater trochanter, uh, this little circular thing right here, right? Um, and thank you, many, many so's. I do, I do want to let you guys know, though, that this is my last stream on Twitch. I probably should have told you guys, um, this is my last stream on, on Twitch. So I hope you guys enjoy the last day out here. Uh, it's been a good run. It's been a good run, guys. We've had a great, uh, a lot of great adventures, a lot of great streams, a lot of, a lot of amazing memories, but um, all good things do have to come to an end. Yes, my last stream. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. Um, it is actually just my last stream until I go on a break. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be on a break uh, for about a week after today, and I'll be back next week, next week uh, Thursday. Uh, yes, taking a break because I've been streaming hard, and we've we've finished a course out here, and I feel like what better time to take a break than after a long class teaching, you know? So I'm all, you know, I'm taking a break here. Don't worry, guys. I'll be back. I'll be back on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even April Fools. I know. It's not a joke. It's a it's a it's a real it, this is my last this is my last stream um of this week. It's a true statement. It's actually a fair statement. But yes, we've been we've been doing a lot of uh we've been doing a lot of things out here, man. I've been teaching on Twitch for a while now and I feel like it's a good time to take a break. Uh I think I think I've deserved it. So I'll be taking a break and then we'll be jumping back into doing another uh boot camp and stuff. Um, thank you so much, Karin. Appreciate you, uh, coming in again and hanging out here. Is it late for you, by the way? Um, those of you who came in from the raid, I'd love to know what time it is. Cause I know, I feel like it's probably late for you, right? Thank you for the sub, by the way, uh, zero, zero kid. 
Uh, by the way, if you guys didn't know, um, today's stream is a special stream because it's my last day of the boot camp right here. Uh, today, I've changed my sub goal such that every five subs on my stream will actually unlock free resources for everybody watching today. So if you guys want some free art resources out here, uh, today is the best day to be subscribing. And also, if you want to uh, share some of the, you know, the resources to other people as well. So these probably i probably won't do this after today maybe most likely not um but anyways going back here now to the knees and stuff so when it comes down to actually piecing in the structure here of the legs and the knees um the way that the knees work is basically we're going to be adding in some fat pads so a little bit of a fat pad right here a fat pad right here and a fat pad right here these will help soften out some of that transition there of the knee uh, but then also uh, right underneath the knee is going to be something called the tibial tuberosity which is actually going to be this little thing here that connects the knee the patella to the bone there of the tibia okay so again you can play around with this however you like uh, i'm going to go in here and just give him some pants so that way we don't get banned on twitch for just drawing naked men though honestly i think this is okay but you never know you never know with twitch they always they be crazy sometimes uh my last stream this week it's midnight 1257 oh actually that's not that bad huh midnight 1257 let me think where okay what time where in the world is it midnight 1257 mm. Hong Kong, I think, is midnight right now, or 27, 1 a.m., maybe the Philippines, probably also as well. Japan could be also, right? Let me think. I'm trying to think parts of the world here that are, that are in that time zone. 1 a.m. Korea, possibly as well, too. Let me know. Let me know where in the world you might be coming in from. If that's okay. I know some people are still keeping it hidden. Uh, Japan. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Cool. Nice. Actually, out of curiosity, where's um, what time is it for everybody right now? What's it, where's everybody watching in from? What time, are you, what time is it for you guys? Because right now for me, it's 9 a.m. in the morning. This is my, my go-to morning routine before I start work which will be in about a few hours. Uh, but here, let's go add some calf muscles, like so. Let's give him some blocky calf muscles. And we're gonna raise one end first, keep the, keep the other end a little bit lower, and then let's kind of go down here and finish it off now by adding in the ankle bone, like so outer ankle bone here and then we'll uh wrap it up with the legs like so okay now i believe this should have been the bottom of the knee like so so i'm going to kind of change some of the warp in there um Okay. Cool. So I think so far we're good, right? You guys are following along. Nothing too crazy yet. I feel like, um, let me kind of fix some things up here. 11 AM. We need a poll. Yeah. But I don't know if I can capture the poll properly. There's just too much. <laughs> A lot of different time zones right now. Uh, thank you for the follow, Tanker Freak, uh, Tank Freak, Rip Sky Doodle, um, Andres, uh, Pa Mach, Cloud Veggie Ben, Prime Rose T, and everyone else coming in here. Wow. Oh, yeah, I got a dog too. If you guys haven't noticed yet, he's over there. He's just kind of doing his thing. Do your thing, 21. He's just chilling today. Um, but let's go ahead now and do the other leg. We'll do the hands and then I'll talk a little bit about variations that we can do 
um, out here, right? So this is kind of our standard build character here. A lot of boxy shapes overall. Like, yeah, we've got a lot of um, triangular shapes. But if you take a look at the overall build here that we have for this character, this guy's pretty, pretty boxy. If you take a look at from shoulder to shoulder, the shape design not as much taper as we could and so we'll uh we'll maybe do some variations of that or maybe we'll just do a different design of a character or maybe i'll just work on the upper body as an example yeah let's maybe do some of that uh, and also ricky hey welcome back in ricky how have you been black book nana nana page yo what's going on today thank you so much for all the follows out here uh question mark what's going on is it do people just like anatomy? Is that just what I'm getting today? I feel like whenever I do anatomy streams, people always just come in like crazy. They're like, yo, look at this man. He's doing muscles. He's drawing muscles today. He's talking about anatomy. Jump in quick. Is that the vibe? I don't know. Well, welcome in everybody. Thank you so much for everyone coming in here. For those of you who are following right now, I'd love to know how you guys came across my stream. I know some of you came in from the raid, but maybe you came here from Recommended. Uh, you found me on my YouTube channel and you're, you're stopping by here, perhaps. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know if you guys are here from uh, where, where you guys are coming in from. Yo, Rip Dalla, thank you so much for the prime sub. Appreciate that. Uh, name of the ball too, Yoshi. Sheesh. Yeah, we're <laughs> what on what on earth? So here, let's kind of go for some boxy forms as well for the legs. So what's really cool about shape design is you don't. It can be used in everything. So the way that you draw your feet, the way that you draw the body, everything can have um, some form of shape design. And so I always tell people, you know, like don't limit it to just like oh the the torso is a box or whatever. Uh, you can definitely do it in so many different places and so many different opportunities. You just kind of have to be a little bit creative with how you want to represent uh, a lot of these different things. So here, for example, we're going to give him like a very boxy, you know, very boxy character here. So there you go. Um, I guess we'll just draw out. Why not? I'll just draw out the feet too. Sure. We're already here, you know. Okay. Uh, there you go. And whoa, thanks so much for all the, the subs out here and all the people coming in today. Recommended first now with Exo's raid. Oh, nice. Came in from Karin, uh, Karin's raid, huh? Sexy manly voice and muscles. What the heck? <laughs> you guys are wild. Thank you for, thank you for everyone coming in here. Um, but okay, let's go in now and draw some quick hands. And then I think we'll move on to a few kind of variations here uh, with this pose, with this character, right? So we've got here, this is kind of your standard boxy build, I feel like. You can't really go wrong with this build. But let me see if I could also liquefy a few things out too. Um, yo, thanks for the prime. Appreciate that, Lamasaverse. Oh, I think it only works for new subs, I think. I don't know. It's weird like that. All right, let me let me taper down the shoulders a little bit here. Uh, but now we got this kind of boxy build for this character. Let me go ahead and kind of uh, make him a little bit bigger as well. And then let's kind of draw some hands in. And I think we'll be good with this pose. Again, just kind of building in that structure, building in some of that form there. You just started drawing again after eight years. And it's my first time drawing digitally. I'm looking for informative, informative channels where I can learn how to draw so I can better my skills. Found you on Twitch. I recommend it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Actually, uh, crazy enough, that's actually similar to my story. I also... Uh, I also didn't draw for about six years. Fun fact for those of you coming in for the first time, I actually used to be a software engineer. So after high school, I just, well, 
when I was in high school, I basically decided I wanted to be an artist and stuff. But unfortunately, being Asian and growing up in an Asian household here in the U.S., uh, it kind of made it a little difficult. You know, parents were kind of like, are you sure? Because from what we see on the Internet, artists are always starving, you know? So I was kind of like, ah, but I still went to art school. Uh, couldn't afford art school. So I dropped out of art school. Uh, and then after all of that, I decided to go and study computer science because I couldn't afford art school and I decided to give up on art altogether. Uh, and then after being a software engineer for basically five, uh, five ish years, yeah, five ish years, I decided to start picking up drawing again. And I realized that drawing is what I've always wanted to do from the start. And then now I work full time in the animation industry. So it's come kind of full circle. It's been a long journey, but uh, that's a little bit about a little bit about me and um, how I kind of came to where I'm at. So all the stuff that I teach you guys out here on Twitch, a lot of it honestly is just from stuff that I've personally learned myself, whether that was from taking classes, reading books uh, mentorships, all of that stuff. So this is just kind of a, a culmination of everything I've learned and just resharing that with everyone here, because I know what it feels like to not be able to afford art education, whether in the past and even now, you know, like even in this day and age where they've got all these cool, fancy schmancy art courses that you've probably seen, right? You've probably seen your favorite content creator or something be like, Hey, check out my new course on Colosso or project city or, or brainstorm or whatever. And then you look at the price tag and it's like a couple hundred dollars, you know, it's, it's kind of tough. Like, sure. You want to support your favorite creator, but I feel like in general, uh, learning art shouldn't be something that is gate kept right? Like, I don't know. I feel like as long as you want to learn and you want to improve, that to me is all that matters. And, um, I will always give you guys as much free and edu free and accessible content as I can, uh, for as long as I'm able to though, though, you know, this, I, at the, at the end of the day, this is what I do as a second job. So I do have to try to <laughs> make make some money out here. So I do, you know, for those of you guys who wonder, and that's probably the main reason why I run ads on my stream and stuff is because, you know, I gotta, I gotta cover it somehow, some, some way or another out here. So I do hope that's okay with you guys. Thank you for the, for the follows, by the way, Contius and Humongous out here. Thank you. Mm, glad to find their way back. Yeah, I know. It's been, it's been really nice actually. Yeah, educational content. I put the K in education, though there is no K in education, but there technically is a K in education, if you get what I'm saying. Um, is, is this a new link, Lamasiverse? I think it should work, hopefully. Um, you said it's one of those days and your first thought was the Limp Biscuit song? Yeah, it's it's one of those days. Every every great musician has has written a song about having one of those days. Thanks, Lamasiverse. Uh, oh, yeah, guys, if you have any questions also, feel free to ask them in the chat. So this stream um, and, and overall, you, you guys will find as you hang out here. But usually my streams are very chatty. Um, I try to keep it as open for conversation as best as I can for everyone who's watching. So if you have any questions about what we're doing today, questions about me in general or just the future of the boot camps or the future of my streams, whatever, you know, whatever questions you might have, do feel free to ask it out here and I will do my best. Also, Chaisa, damn, well, you know, it's Chaisia, right? Uh, welcome, welcome in. Welcome. Uh, let me give you a shout out too. I watch your streams. I'm a little quiet over there because, um, you know, it's the, it's the good stuff. <laughs> but there you go. I'll leave you, I'll leave you, uh, I'll leave you a shout out there. Uh, what are my vacation plans? I, okay. I know this is going to sound bad for some of you guys, but I, I'm actually not going to be, um, I'm, I'm going to be taking a vacation from Twitch, but I'm actually still going to be working. I, I know this. <laughs> You'd be a little like, Kesa, hey, what kind of break is that? I, I know guys, I'm a bit of a workaholic. Okay. But like, it's a break from Twitch so that I can prepare for the next boot camp that I'm going to be doing with you guys. That's really the break to be honest. Um, but I just wanted to kind of give a break for myself, but you know, I'll be doing some fun drawing and stuff too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
it'll be a pseudo ish break. New boot camp, let's go. Yes. Uh, what else is planned for your vacation? I mean, nothing. I mean, I'm still working. F I'm I'm still <laughs> I'm still doing my full time job. Uh, if you guys uh, if you guys missed the intro earlier, um, I do work in the animation industry. I work for a studio called Powerhouse Animation. They're the studio that made Castlevania, and I work nine to five um, over there. So after my streams, I basically hop right on to work and do studio stuff. So I still will do, I, I will still be doing that. And so I'm only really taking a quote unquote break from streaming. So that way I can prepare uh, for the next boot camp, which will not be the same boot camp, by the way, for those of you who are, who are wondering, it'll be a different boot camp, and we're going to be covering different topics. But if you guys want to catch the old boot camp content, um, again, those are available. Uh, those are actually available for free on my YouTube channel. So you guys can go ahead and check that out and grab grab that new boot camp. Yes. Lord heavens above. It's going to be another boot camp, another 30 day challenge, guys. It'll be juicy. It'll be difficult out here. Um, do you think it's better to start a character design from a frontal view rather than a quarter turn and then work from there? Um, I think it depends. Honestly, I think, I think quarter view is great because it gives you a lot of depth for your character. Oftentimes, a lot of designers will work on a quarter view because it gives you um, a little bit of the front side as well as a side view of your character, but it's all a matter of preference, honestly. Uh, but there you go guys we have here this build of this character now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna see if I can maybe use this build and see if we can just kind of warp things around or should we work on the next pose how much time do we got hmm, we got some time I think um, anything on my internship oh you mean my mentorship about whether or not I'm gonna have my mentorship I'm still trying to figure out if I want to have a mentor if I want to host a mentorship program for you guys um, but we'll see um ba -ba -ba -bum. how to draw feet yeah so i i'll be releasing that video on youtube actually so for those of you wondering we've covered a lot of things on my streams uh we already covered how to draw feet and shoes on my stream uh day 18 at the boot camp so uh you can stick tuned for that when the youtube video drops for how to draw feet but yeah we'll get you we'll get you covered don't worry i know some of you guys are out here eager eager to draw um some feet <laughs> don't worry don't you worry we got you covered let me go ahead and uh, put a little multiply layer here, put a little bit of that motion blur just to kind of give it some pizzazz. And then we'll go ahead and color this one out. And then I'll probably draw here a female character instead. Uh, and then and then we'll, I think, maybe we'll talk about shape design. Hmm, let's see. I'm thinking right now we should do this now or later. Maybe we should do it now. Uh, once or twice a month would be cool. For which one? Oh, the mentorship, maybe? Let's see here. Yeah, I'm still figuring out how uh, we would go about it. But yes, um, thank you again, everyone who's coming in here today. I'm genuinely surprised by all the excitement and engagement and rating shenanigans that have been going on here. I hope you guys are having a great Tuesday so far. At the least, I hope your Tuesday is decent. But all right, let me go in here and I guess we should talk about some shape design using this body type. Okay, here's what I'll do. Whoa, whoa, why is it that color? Um, <gasps> don't tell me. Ah, I did it on the same layer that I drew the lines on. Oh my gosh. Yo, okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Woo! Spooky. Um, spooky, spooky. Um, it's amazing when you meet someone that loves what they do. Yeah, no, I love streaming on Twitch. Twitch for me is... Is like, I don't know. It's, it's honestly, I, look, this might sound super sappy and stuff, and I always, I always preface this, but I'm gonna pause the music for this. Um, I, I always tell this to people out here, but in all honesty... Twitch, if it wasn't for Twitch and if it wasn't for streaming and you guys coming out here, I honestly would not be an artist. I, when I was, you know, still figuring things out when I was a software engineer, 
I thought it was basically done for me. I thought it was I was too old to be an artist. I thought everyone else was already way better. There was all these young artists I kept seeing on Instagram, 14, 15 year olds who were doing crazy stuff. And I just looked at my stuff and I said, man, I'm nowhere near any of these people. What's the point of me even trying anymore, right? And so if it wasn't really for streaming and if it wasn't for the community coming out here just to hang out, hang out with me drawing and have you guys also drawing as well, I honestly probably wouldn't have stuck around and drawn for as long as I have to the point where I realized that this was something that I genuinely wanted to do. And so I always thank you guys. I know this sounds like, you know, every streamer thanks their their community and stuff. I'll always, obviously. Um, but I do genuinely thank you guys for the past three years of streaming on Twitch. It's uh, probably been the happiest time of my life. Not going to lie. I've uh, no regrets. I don't regret quitting my job as a software engineer. I don't regret picking things back up where I left off back when I was in high school, you know, and I don't regret, uh, I don't know, teaching out here. I love teaching out here for you guys. And I hope you guys enjoy it too. There you go. That's all I wanted to say. Anyways, let's move on. No sappiness out here. Okay. No sappy messages. I just wanted to share that because I don't know. I feel like it's, it's something I care about, but let's move on. Ignore, ignore what I said. Huh? <laughs> huh? Um, what are my canvas settings? My canvas settings are 4k resolution. That's what I use. All right, but there you go. We got here boxy man, boxy muscular dude. A little bit rough on the lines, I know, but that's okay. We're not trying to make a finished character design here, right? I mean, maybe we are, but I'm not trying to make a finished character design. But you can kind of see here with this one, um, we'll kind of take a look at some of the overall shapes here that we're working with. So let me go kind of change this to a hard light really quick. And we'll go over here and kind of piece in some of the blocky forms. So you can kind of see here this character build, uh, despite having, you know, a pretty, uh, despite having a pretty wide set shoulders there, overall, the shape of the character here is going to be following kind of this rectangular structure. Even here, the structure of the legs are going to be following kind of this blocky shape right here. There's very little to uh, no tapering. So like the, the, the width here of the upper leg is going to be roughly about the same here the width of the lower leg you can kind of see that across the motif here of this character right so this is going to be more of a boxy character that we're going to see uh, but i'll do one variation here where we have like let's say a more rounded character perhaps or a more boxy or a more triangular character which one would you guys like to see let me actually ask you guys in the chat um and thank you for all the hearts guys i tried to keep it as not sappy as i could um, Gox42, thank you for the follow. And also Pixojoy. Welcome in. Let me ask you guys, do you guys want me to do a round character design or a triangular character design? Uh just let's do a quick poll. Why not? All right, poll in the chat. What is this? Uh sh which shape? Question mark. Um triangle or circle? All right, one minute poll, quick speed run on this one, guys. Run it quick. Uh, artist, entertainer, teacher, dog cam, many check marks on the good Twitch content box. <laughs> triangle is too easy. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think triangle is easy. <laughs> but most of you guys want triangle. Yo, we got another raid out here. <laughs> what the heck? uh thank you for the raid nvq we're running a poll right now tell your community to vote do you guys want me to do a triangular shaped character design or a more circular character design apparently you guys really want me to go do triangle i thought you guys were going to vote circle to be honest you guys were going to challenge me to draw like a, a round big character but y'all want the triangular shape which is, is good for me it's easy to do um thank you so much everybody who's been raiding me apparently you guys all know it's my last day on twitch out here so you guys are all just raiding uh, but thank you so much. Let me give a proper shout out here to NVQ. If you guys don't know who NVQ is, they're a super dope uh, streamer out here on Twitch. They make some beautiful uh, lines with their art. And I I recommend checking out their channel. Give them, a, give them a follow out there. And I hope you guys from NVQ stream enjoy my stream. My, my name is KSM. I've done this intro so many times today. And I'm so sorry for those of you who have to stick around for the intro. It's just we've been getting so many raids. So I got to give a proper intro out here. 
But for those of you guys who are coming in here from MVQ Stream, welcome in. My name is Casey. I'm a full time, uh, I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. And I teach anatomy, gesture, perspective, and all things related to character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Currently, right now, I'm actually preparing to work as a character designer on shows such as Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, you guys like dogs who sleep over there, or you just want to hang out on my stream, do leave a follow out here on Twitch. There you go. That was the sped run version of my intro. <laughs> I'm sure nobody understood what I just said. But if you did understand, leave a follow. If you could understand what I was saying, leave a follow out here. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, what do you mean it's my last day on Twitch? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm moving. I'm moving, guys, to Mixer. It's crazy. No, no. Um, I'm taking a break um, from streaming for about a week to just kind of reset myself. And then I'll be back in about a week and a half from, from today. So today is my last stream before I take my break. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to spook you guys. Hey, they were getting some follows out here. See, people know. Um, I thought you won't be boot camping. No, no, no. We'll be <laughs> not moving to kick. Guys, you're not going to believe it. I got signed on a non-exclusive deal with kick. It's going to be insane. No, I don't think I ever would. Um, but let me, uh, let's go ahead and do a quick triangular structure here. All right. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Let's go ahead and slap this one in. Yeah. Self-care is important. hundred percent. Hey, my dog wants to say hi to you guys too. Sheesh. Hey, buddy. I guess we might do, uh, we might, we might have him come out during the ad break or something. All right. So how do we get some nice juicy triangular shapes? Actually not bad. Um, it's actually not that hard to do, especially with the build that we have right now. Um, and also here's a puppy power redemption. Here you go. So how do we get a nice triangular shape? As I mentioned earlier, uh, triangular shapes are actually going to be uh, not too difficult because we already have a nice build for this character. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you guys with the upper body possibly, or maybe we'll do a speed run here. Um, but a few things that you can do here is one, we can maybe change the shape of the head. So maybe we'll give him more of a tapered look, right? So a tapered kind of face right here to, to make him feel a little bit more of a sharper character, make him feel a little bit more dangerous almost, right? Uh, but of course we also have to be careful because if we do make him a little bit more uh, tapered We might also end up making him a little bit skinnier. So we kind of have to make sure we're keeping that Oh, or, or we could do that. We can just make him warped. Yeah, that works too But no, no, we're gonna we're gonna try to we're gonna try to taper it out a little bit here Lengthen out his face a bit more kind of add a bit there of, of the jaw And then I'm also gonna maybe widen his head out a bit too. So that way we're getting a very drastic taper So we're kind of sh making his upper portion of the head wider uh, tapering out here The inner portion let's go ahead and sharpen out his ears as well, too So we're kind of again adding in just subtle elements to really give us Subtle things here that can kind of give this character more of a triangular look and feel, right? Uh, let's see here. But yes, welcome in. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you again for all the follows. And I will say really quick, I do run ads on my stream every hour. So if you guys do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. Uh, they do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. So if you get an ad, really appreciate you sticking around. But if you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a Prime sub out here. And also Bib Tiki. Hey, welcome, uh, welcome in. Welcome back in. So let's go ahead now and I'm going to just kind of really I'm going to just hide this one as much as I can But I want to kind of build off of it just in a little bit So I don't have to worry too much about structuring the anatomy But let's go ahead and kind of really establish your triangular character And I would say for a triangular character using kind of the same build here that we have I'm going to be utilizing some shapes again But we're also going to be using size to also help showcase some of the uh, changes that we're going to have here for our character So here I'm going to go for maybe a Kind of like, let's say, a thinner kind of a shoulder here, like so. So a smaller shoulder here for this character. Maybe I'll bring down the clavicle just a little bit lower to kind of help create that diamond shape there for this character's build. Uh, we're going to kind of slope down the shoulders as well, too. And so this will kind of give us more of a drop off, right? So the the first design that we had for the more boxy character, his shoulders more more upright, which helps create a little bit of stability and balance right there right um, now we're going to go for a more sharper look here 
And a lot of the sharpness also can be evoked in many different ways, even internally too. So maybe we'll go in here and we'll kind of lower out his pectoral muscles like so, and kind of give him more of a sharper push up here in the arms like that. And then maybe we'll give him some thin arms. Why not? So we'll give him some thin arms here like that. But here's where things can get really fun. Maybe we'll still give him huge forearms. Why not? Let's just give him some gigantic forearms here. Um, a little bit of a drastic taper. And what this will do is it'll naturally, you can kind of see how it's already happening. This will actually naturally give him uh, kind of this sharper look here. The man, the man's got forearms. Okay. I don't, yeah. Popeye looking, looking ass over here. <laughs> Um, we're going to go ahead here and kind of exaggerate the, the sharpness there as well of the triceps, elbow, all of that stuff. And you can kind of see here how already we're really changing some of the design overall, right? Let me actually bring in, I really want to make that bicep just super, super tapered there. There you go. Um, would this lessons work also for realistic drawings? Oh, hundred percent. A lot of what I'm doing now are exaggerated shapes, but you can also incorporate a lot of these things with a little bit more subtlety, um, with just how you choose your shapes and how you convey certain things. So using round versus, um, using round versus straight lines, using, you know, curves versus, uh, straights again. So you can definitely do some of these variations easily. Um, but now here's where some of that, that taper now here, we're going to utilize here a bit of that taper here for the shoulders or not the shoulders, sorry, the lap muscles. And I'm really going to kind of bring it in here for the, uh, for the waist, right? So we're going to be keeping a lot of the skeletal anatomy and stuff like that, but I'm going to be kind of giving him more of like a heroic build by just bringing in that waist a little bit more and kind of uh, making his transition there of his lap muscles not as wide on the sides, but instead giving it more of a sharper transition there on the wings. So you can kind of see how if you play around with a lot of these different shapes and stuff, you can really get some interesting kind of designs uh, for your characters. So have fun with it, mix it around. And let's kind of go in here, add a little bit of belly button. Let's add that belt or not that belt, that waist area right here. And then let me kind of fan this one back out. So he kind of almost has like an hourglass shape, but you want to be cautious of that because oftentimes the hourglass shape is a shape that's kind of more utilized for female characters. So I don't want to give him too much of a drastic curvature here. I still want to keep it nice and boxy, but I'm going to add a little bit of a taper now on each end here. So you can kind of see how that also gives it a little bit more of a dynamic feel. Now, other things we can do as well, too, is we can actually maybe sharpen out here some of the features um, of the hands, right? So maybe we can kind of make his hands a little bit more uh, thinner or possibly bigger, but maybe with more bony, a more bony structure here. So again, it's all, it's all about how you utilize your lines. It's not just about large shapes, but even the internal shapes as well. Uh, but thank you for all the follows today, by the way. Lexi, Scene 7, Nazil, uh, Sezi, Zetsi. Hopefully I'm saying your names right. Thank you for the subs again. And really appreciate everyone coming in here. Also, guys, can you guys let me know if and when we do hit 10 subs on my stream? Because I can't, I can barely see it. So <laughs> if you do get uh, if you do get 10 subs, I will give you guys another sheet out here. It's just hard to see. Uh, let's see here, but let's kind of go in now and let's continue with the legs. So here again, I'm just kind of giving it a bit of a speeder. Maybe what we'll do also is for the abs, maybe we'll kind of even taper this one out a bit more as well too. Right? So again, it's really all about, um, incorporating a lot of different shapes here, but from these different shapes, you can actually kind of subtly build out a, a character that still feels really big, right? Still, a, still a very big character don't get that confused, but he's definitely got a little bit more of a taper to him. And I would say more of like an agile type of feel than maybe what we initially had for our, um, 
what we initially had there for our first character where he was really kind of boxy and stuff. Let me kind of, uh, Okay, do a little bit of that. Uh, and then we'll do one more there. Just adding in some of these abdominal kind of shapes, you know. There you go. Nice and easy. Uh, and then after we do this demo, we'll probably work on some female characters uh, to kind of switch it up a little bit. But yes, hopefully this is uh, making some sense here. Let me add, I forgot to add some of his obliques right here. Can't forget the obliques. There you go. Uh, some rippling muscles. Bro in the gym 24-7. He really is. How's it going, Brett? Uh, but yeah, already off the bat, you can kind of see here how these subtle changes to the character and we're just really using the same kind of, uh, we're using the same kind of build here, but just tweaking a few things to help really showcase and sell that this character is a slightly different type of character. He's maybe in a video game, he'd be more of like the, uh, like a berserker type of build. Actually, that's kind of a cool, yeah, I can kind of see him being a bit of a berserker type where he's got a lot of muscle, but he's also much more lean. He's ready to charge in right away, right? He has here some pretty big forearm muscles, which will gradually taper into thinner wrists. Uh, but other than that, I mean, let's kind of exaggerate that. So I want to keep, again, keep some of the, keep some of the form here. So all I really did for this one was I said, you know what, let's give him... Let's keep the, the largeness here of the of the forearms, but let's go ahead and shrink this one and kind of give this one more of a medium build. So really trying to go in here, uh, really trying to go in here and pick and choose how we how we size up our character designs. And I personally think that's a really great way to be able to uh, a really great way to be able to also add some variety to your characters. So building off of the same design, but using in now uh, different types of shapes can really make it super easy to come up with something that's new, even though it's technically the same look and feel. Uh, I want to keep the hands the same for this one. I think the hands are good here. Uh, maybe you'll go like that. Okay. Uh, and then one last thing that we can do as well too is maybe let's go in and add just a little bit of uh, a little bit of a taper here for the legs because it does look like his legs are going to be a little bit they're kind of big and so maybe what we'll do here is I'll kind of add a bit of a curve and kind of help make this portion of his leg a little bit thinner so it kind of tapers out a bit more so maybe we'll go down here um, let's do. Something like that. Okay. Just giving them some nice, juicy, uh, nice, juicy quads there. But notice how I'm bringing in that taper way, way earlier now. And that gives you a slightly different effect, right? Much more leaner look on this guy's legs. Than maybe what we had before. Will you add that big claymore? Oh, we should. Or give him like some axes or something. You know? I don't know. <laughs> we'll give him something. Uh, something to kind of uh, exaggerate it. But let's kind of... Here, let's also take this one now too. And let me really exaggerate here his calves, right? So, like, we'll bring his calves out more. Taper out his ankles more. Uh, like this. And so, you know, making a character more triangular doesn't necessarily mean you're making them leaner uh, than what you had from the other one, but you can actually kind of exaggerate certain features while adding in more kind of a taper here. So here, I would say now he's got more of like dynamic shapes, right? So he's got here this kind of uh, 
much bigger calf muscles. He's still muscular. I wouldn't call this guy lean by any means, uh, but he's definitely not going to be as much. Uh, he's not going to have as much overall mass as the other as the other character. <laughs> he's a he's got calves for sure. Man's got uh, those cow calves. Uh, I'm going to keep the, the, the feet here kind of about the same. So that way I don't have to worry too much about them. But yeah, I hope, I hope this makes sense to you guys. Uh, for those of you who are seeing this demo, um, again, it's, it's really not necessarily about going too crazy. Like, yeah, you can, we can definitely push the shape to be even more, uh, more intense, more, more triangular, but sometimes even adding in subtle changes and variations to size and shape can really, can really do a whole lot for, um, uh, for your character designs, right? So let me go ahead here and wrap up on this one uh, with the legs. Again, giving him some huge, huge calves there, but kind of tapering it back in uh, for the ankle. We're going to kind of do the same thing on this side, add a little bit of a form there for the tibialis anterior, and then thinning out the ankles there. And I would say this is going to be our uh, triangular character using the same type of uh, strong uh, strong type of character motif build there. Muscular, but triangular shape design, right? Let me know in the chat. Was that helpful out here? This is basically that demo. Let me kind of give him a bit more of a taper. And I'll show you guys the, the before and after, um, the one underneath and the one on top here. You guys can kind of see what I'm working with. Let me go ahead and make this one full. Um, merge this one here. Let me do some colors for here and then we'll be good to go. Let me duplicate this, multiply this 40% uh, and then we're going to go in here, motion blur just a little bit to give it some nice crispy lines. And yeah, look at that. Nice. Lean, but muscular type of character, right? Uh, let me go ahead and add some color to this one. So it looks a little bit cooler here, but otherwise I think that's going to be our rough demo there for the triangular muscular type of character. Uh, next up, we're going to do some female poses and we'll probably, that'll be a good one to showcase. I think some of the round character motif, especially with a character like, um, I think Reina is her name. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Uh, draw the Hulk anatomy next. Oof, that's a tough one. I think the Hulk anatomy is basically if you took the all the muscle groups that are there and you really just exaggerated and kind of juiced up every single muscle that existed on the body, um, which I think is a really, it's honestly very impressive how they were able to do the the designs for the Hulk. But don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna go do uh, we're gonna go draw a female character next because I know that not everyone here draws muscular uh, male characters. I'm sure some of you draw female characters as well, right? So let me go ahead and just get this one kind of nice and cleaned up here, just so that it's a little bit more presentable, and then we will uh, move on. You only, you don't draw males, only females. Okay, perfect. Well then the next one will be for you, but also this is for you too, because I always tell you guys, it's beneficial to learn how to draw, uh, different types of characters, whether it be male and female, young, old, right? Uh, fat, muscular. So for those of you guys who are maybe struggling with some of those things, 
Uh, don't worry because that's literally what my next boot camp is going to be about. But actually, let me ask you guys right now in the chat, everybody in the chat, put an F in the chat. If maybe you're really good at drawing one thing, like let's say you're good at drawing female characters, but the moment you try to draw, let's say a male character or a kid or an older character, you're like, yo, this sucks. This looks like trash. Put an F in the chat if you're in that situation right now. I want to see how many of you guys, um, you're kind of like, yeah, man, I don't know. Every time I try to draw something else, it just looks yeesh. It's a yikes out here. Let me, let me lower this real quick. Boop, boop, boop. All right, but let's take a quick look um, at the before and after here. So again, muscular bit, uh, square build here. And then we have here a more triangular build, right? So let me go ahead and choose a different color for this one. Wow, look at all the Fs in the chat, damn. Sheesh. I can't believe it. That's a lot of Fs. You just started drawing last month. Nice, that's pretty good. A lot of Fs in the chat. Thank you for the D shrimp and for the question. Uh, so again, if, if it is something that you struggle with, I highly recommend you guys tune in for my next boot camp because my next boot camp is actually just called it's called the Variations Boot Camp and the main purpose of this boot camp no joke is literally to teach you guys how to draw different types of characters. We're going to be going over how to draw uh, male characters, female characters, children, teenagers, adults, old characters, uh, monsters. We're also going to be going over different builds of characters as well, so muscular versus fat versus lean. So I highly recommend um, you guys check out that boot camp. It'll be starting next week, Thursday. Okay, so I'm going to be taking a bit of a break uh, out here on Twitch for about a week to kind of pre prepare for the next boot camp, but it'll probably be starting um, on Thursday. So stay tuned for that one, guys. And I hope it helps. Do I do boot camps for coloring? Um not necessarily actually and the main reason why is mostly just because uh as someone who works in the animation industry and usually in the industry uh depending on what's what type of industry you work in but in the animation industry usually someone else does the coloring for you and so in my case i usually just work with the colors that i'm already given by someone else who does that. So there's usually a color scripter or a color artist who works on getting the palette and the look for particular scenes and stuff. So personally, I haven't had too much practice to be able to, um, to teach it well enough, but maybe, maybe at some point in the future, we can definitely do a color, um, a color type of stream and stuff, but okay, there you go. We've got here our, Triangle man versus uh, triangle man versus square man, you know, the battle of two shapes right here. All right. Um, and hey, Daniel Draws, welcome in. Thanks for joining into the stream today. And thank you for all the follows and thank you for the prime sub out here, Vinny. Have a guest co-star from work. Honestly, I've thought about it. I've thought of bringing on some people out here um, from my work and stuff that would be down to chat with you guys. But there you go. Look at this. See? Not bad, right? Uh, will you have some interesting activity for 100k crew coins? Possibly, yes. I'm not too sure yet, but possibly, yes. <laughs> Let me go ahead and kind of taper them out a bit more, give it really some more exaggeration. I really want to sell here, uh, you know, the shape of this guy, right? Uh, but again, um, you know, you can play around with these things and you don't have to make every single shape here a triangular shape, a boxy shape. You can uh, be super flexible with all this. And so have fun at the end of the day. And I think that's really uh, what I think is more important overall. But there you go. Ta-da. Okay. Um, but let's go do let's go do one more out here. Uh, I think this will be a solid one to work on. So let me actually duplicate this, flatten this one, 
And let me also duplicate this and flatten this one. And I'm gonna move both of these on the side here now. So that way you guys can kind of see uh, what we worked on today. But let's go in here. Um, let's go do one more example. And this one, guys, is we're going to be going over now kind of the female structure here. And this is this character, uh, Reyna, from uh, Valorant. And you'll kind of see here. Um, you'll kind of see here we've got a few interesting kind of shapes here that we're going to utilize to draw maybe more of a curvy character, um, leveraging here the build of Reyna. Now, we're not going to be drawing her exactly, so we're going to be using her more as a reference. So I'm going to be putting her to the side there as we go in now and start drawing out um, some of this, uh, some of the character here. Okay, but let's uh, let's jump right in, I guess. You love Reyna? Nice. Yeah, I've been playing some Overwatch, not Overwatch, geez, uh, some uh, some da -da 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 Valorant recently, and so I've been kind of hooked on some of the character designs. They're really good. But we'll talk a little bit about posing our characters as well, too, because I feel like we've got here some pretty standard static poses, but I would like to also give you guys some examples of what it would look like to maybe give a character more of an interesting pose while also utilizing some of the rounded, uh, some of the rounded shapes. Okay, so let's go in and start locking some of these things out. Uh, I don't know if this is really an art related question, but how long in your art journey did it take for you to look at your art and uh, to like what you've made? Hmm. I think personally liking your art is a ongoing journey of how does this, how does this work? It's like, it's, it's a, it's an ongoing journey of appreciating the things that you've done and how far you've come. Uh, but also being able to, uh, being able to tell yourself that you can do more and where you can improve on. So personally for me, I think when I was really young, um, I was all like, oh, wow, look at me. I know how to draw cool stuff, you know? And I was really kind of, uh, what's the word here? I was really kind of arrogant with my art when I was first starting out because I, I was getting told by a lot of people like, oh yeah, you should, um, you know, you should learn some anatomy or you should learn how to draw this and that. And I would always be like, you can't tell me what to do. This is my anime style. This is how I draw my characters. And I'd be super stubborn. I'd be super stubborn about all of that stuff. And, um, that led to honestly me feeling like I was stunting my growth. Right. So in some ways there are, there are cases where actually, liking your art and being over uh, overzealous about your own work uh, can really actually be detrimental to your growth. Now, this was a lot younger. This is when I was like first starting out as an artist and, you know, I would draw my Naruto fan art and all that stuff. And then my art teachers would be like, oh, you know what would really help is if you studied some anatomy, studied some of the masters. And I'd be like, yeah, you're, you don't know anything about the anime style, you know, <laughs> all of that stuff. And I realized that that was actually holding me back a lot because I kept just doing this one style and copying this one technique, but not really actually learning the fundamental involved to designing characters um and so it wasn't until i decided to learn um a lot of those things and kind of have to reteach myself that i realized like oh okay you know what these are actually things that are important anatomy uh basic shapes perspective all of those things can come in really handy uh for being able to draw interesting characters and also being able to level up your character design overall so um, I would say that's kind of what I hope that answers your question. It, it wasn't like there was a particular time where I was like, wow, I'm happy with my work. Um, it was more so I had to learn how to humble myself and while also giving myself a pat on the back, right? Because let's be honest, I know a lot of you guys in the chat right now are probably have probably at some point in your time as an artist you know, you probably, you probably shit on yourself. Sometimes you're kind of like, yo man, this, this art is the worst thing ever. H how many guys here put an F in the chat. If you guys have ever drawn something and you looked at it and, and you were like, this is so bad that I just want to quit drawing altogether. I'm done. I don't want to ever draw again. What am I doing? Why am I trying to be an artist? You know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I feel like we as artists on the spectrum sometimes are a little hard on ourselves because 
we we you know we're our worst critics as people say right you're like this is horrible this is it i'm done i'm done ever drawing so i think it's a balance of that right it's um it's a balance of uh it's a balance of just understanding where you are in your journey giving yourself a pat on the back but also letting yourself know that there is room to grow we don't need anatomy or physics to confine the anime titties <sighs> that yeah that's that's a fair <laughs> The, the the anime art works in a different way. Yeah, I think, you know, that is that is a whole different ball game. I agree. <laughs> hey yo, that's that's not a that's not a wrong statement. Okay, but here I'm gonna be drawing out this um kind of just a female kind of pose here. And we're again gonna be utilizing uh this character Reyna. And I'm just giving you guys a quick kind of gesture, uh gestural approach here before we jump into actually pushing in some of the shape design uh for this character. But again, I want to remind you guys that for a lot of these things, one, take what I say with a grain of salt, but you can with shape design, you can really be as subtle or as um exaggerated as you want to be, right? Now for this character here, I am going to be using a rough guideline for proportions. So for those of you who maybe struggle with drawing proportions for your character, if there was anything, like if I could give you guys a quick, like one minute or less, easiest way to do proportions for your character, it's going to be understanding this, okay? No matter if, if you're trying to go for a semi-realistic or realistic representation of the human body, this is going to be the way to do it, okay? You establish here the grid of how tall your character is. The halfway mark here of how tall your character is is going to be usually where either the greater trochanter or where the legs kind of start here halfway from that to that is going to be where the bottom of the knees are going to be and then from halfway to here to here is usually where the nipples are going to land sometimes it'll vary depending on the volume of a character um, but generally speaking that's kind of the rough area there you can kind of go higher or lower depending but overall these are going to be the general proportions out there that you can use pretty standard stuff um, we use this all the time on, on like Castlevania style type of shows you'll see this in Legend of Korra but this is kind of it the baseline for just locking in some easy proportions for your characters that I wanted to show you guys okay uh, but let's go back in here now and start drawing out the uh, the character that we have. Let me actually move her a little bit further out and we will uh, continue. So for, um, for, for this design here, for a more rounded type of character build, that's going to be a little bit more subtle and not necessarily utilizing the overall like changing the actual body to make her look round, which, we, which maybe we'll do in a bit. Um, all I'm really doing right now as I'm actually going in here and I'm just kind of I'm adding in some gesture and stuff and we'll leverage a lot of the shape design to give us um, these kind of softer, subtle type of rounded forms. Okay, so right now I'm just going in, adding in some quick gestures, nothing too crazy. Um, and let's kind of maybe have her hand resting right here uh, on her hips. Sure, why not? Pew, pew, pew. There you go. Cool. All right, so we have here our rough gesture. Let's kind of go in here and add some uh, some boobas, and then I think we'll be good. Uh, most artists are probably a lot better than they think they are. I think there's also some truth in that too, which is why I think stuff like mentorship can actually be really helpful for some people because sometimes what people struggle with is not necessarily the technical things of art. Uh, sometimes it's uh, it's all in your head. It's all like psychological motivation. People just sometimes need to be told that they're doing a good job, you know? So yeah, that's, that's actually a very, I would say it's a very true statement, 100%. All right, well, now we have here this rough kind of pose. Uh, I'm going to go in now and let's start actually cleaning this one up, adding in a few of the gestures and a few of the forms. And, you know, I'll also, I guess I can also talk a little bit about the anatomy as well. I think there's uh, probably could be beneficial, especially for those of you guys who maybe missed out on the earlier demos that we drew here of the body. So uh, let's go in here and just draw out some of the form here of the character, starting off with maybe the head first. So 
Uh, for this one, since we are going for a rounded character, I'm going to kind of simplify just some of the shapes there and we'll kind of keep it nice and subtle. <laughs> yeah, finally, we're drawing the things that you guys want to see. But, you know, as I, as I always say, it's not like I don't draw female characters out here. We actually draw a fair amount of female characters. Um, but I, I always want to show you guys on my streams how to draw multiple different types of characters, uh, whether it's female, male characters, muscular characters, uh, skinny characters, right? Young characters, old characters. And so I know that this is something that I've struggled with in the past and also something that is very valuable for anybody who wants to uh, work as a character designer. You have to be able to draw different types of characters because, you know, multi usually in, um, in a story, there are going to be different types of characters. Not every character is going to be an anime waifu. Even in those type of stories, there's always like that one guy, you know, it's like a harem story or the opposite. There's like, it's like an isekai type of story. You know what I'm saying? So even in a story like that, where it's all just like, oh my gosh, anime waifus, there's, there's still some variation. And so you got to kind of have to learn, um, different types of characters. I know some of you are like, lies, lies, Kasem. No, <laughs> my world only has anime waifus in it, which is fine. If that's the type of story you want to make. Okay, that's completely fine. And I'm not trying to tell you guys like, oh, if you if you like to draw, you know, um, only male characters, I'm not saying to stop doing that. If you want to draw only that, that's okay. Though I do think that learning how to draw other types can actually be a huge boost in your um, in your skills. <laughs> yeah, I understand. But I do think there's also a difference. There's a difference between somebody who says that they that they want to draw only a, a certain type of character. And then there's a difference between that and then someone who says like they can't draw other type of characters. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're somebody who wants to be able to draw other types of characters, but you're holding yourself back because you don't know how and maybe your standards are that you only want to draw a character that looks good all the time. So thus you, you know, keep drawing the same type of characters. I think in that case, you know, it's beneficial for you to try to explore and try other types of things, even if it's not going to look good at first, which oftentimes it won't. Right. When you're first learning how to draw something new. There's a good, good chance that it's going to look very questionable and that's OK. Um, so for this one right here, I'm just kind of uh, going in and drawing out your kind of a standard kind of female anatomy pose, uh, anatomy proportions here for the character. And then we'll probably go in and I'll, I'll start adding in some like variations and stuff to kind of, you know, add a little bit more to it to make her look, feel a little bit more rounded and stuff. But yeah, welcome in everybody who's coming in here, by the way. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying today's stream. It's been a pretty good stream so far for my uh, my last day of the boot camp. So I appreciate everyone coming out here and hanging out. Appreciate all the people who came in from the raids as well too. Uh, I'd love to know for those of you guys who are coming in here, how did you guys come across my stream today? Uh, did you come in from a raid? Did you come in from the recommended? Did you come from, let me think, what could you possibly have found my stream from? Um, oh, my YouTube channel, possibly. Yeah, my YouTube channel, question mark. I have trouble with uh, nipple paste and boobas. Do you have any tips? Um, you know, that's a good question. I would say, I mean, it all kind of varies. I would say it really depends on, well, I'm not going to draw them just for the sake of, uh, <laughs> just for the sake of not, not getting in trouble with Twitch. But I think it all depends on where you want to place them. So you can kind of, I, here's like an arrow that I would do. You can kind of place them lower depending on the angle, place them higher here. But I think the most important thing is just remembering where the volume is, right? So kind of understanding the volume and the contours there um, that you're working with. And then from there, being able to place where you want it to be. But that's kind of what I would say. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, for the sake of things, I'm just going to draw a line uh, to kind of play it safe here because... You never know. You never know with Twitch sometimes, you know? Oh, nice. That's super awesome from Casey. Appreciate her bringing you in. Um, you're looking for anatomy. 
Nice. You looking for anatomy? I hope you found what you were looking for. So what's really cool too about drawing um, a different type of character like this one here is you'll kind of see how, you know, the anatomy and the proportions really change when you're drawing a character like this where they're not super muscular and, and all of that stuff, right? It's a lot more subtle. And if, if, if anything, I think it's actually more reliant on the... Uh, it's much more reliant on the overall skeletal anatomy than it is about all the muscle groups and stuff. Like, yeah, you can still add some curvature for sure. hundred percent. You can still add some curvature to your character, but I think overall it's, it's going to be really more about being able to just understand some of the general proportions of your character. And then from those general proportions, go in and start placing in, um, subtle forms on top of that anatomy. <laughs> hardly know her yeesh it's okay if you guys if you guys are not familiar with anatomy you will get to know some anatomy on my streams don't you worry um you found me on youtube watch like three of your long you watched three of my videos no break in between damn that's actually insane i appreciate that a lot you know sometimes i worry that i feel like people on youtube might not like my videos because it's not the same as like a live stream. Like live streams are different, you know? I think part of the fun of watching a live stream is that you you get to interact with me, you get to ask me questions and all of that stuff. But on YouTube, I mean, it's still a good video and stuff, but I feel like you kind of lose some of that live aspect. So I was always worried that like people wouldn't enjoy my YouTube videos as much, but I'm glad to hear that there are people out here who who genuinely do enjoy my content, whether it's on YouTube or on Twitch. Um, is that what, what I secretly look like? You're talking about these? You're talking about this or this? Because, yeah, this is this is how I look like. You know what I'm saying? Got the curves. No, no. Um, I'm not muscular like this. I wish. I'm just uh, a lean. I'm a lean man. <laughs> that's, that's all I'll say. I'm sorry. Yeah, my YouTube commands don't work, but here's a link to my YouTube channel. Uh, wait a minute. I think my, I think my commands are back. Let's see. Ah, uh, I got baited. Never mind. Sorry. I got baited. <laughs> uh, I was on the main page. So I clicked because it seemed like a good stream to listen to. Be can maybe be help with my art skills. Oh, nice. I'm on the front page right now. Hey, dude, I got baited so hard. I thought my commands worked. Ah, oh, so, so sad. It's okay. Um, oh, also, I'm not really going over the anatomy on this one. I, I assume that you guys don't need me to, but let me know. Let me know. Face reveal when? Ah, uh, we did one earlier. Do you want me to show my face again on stream? I don't know. I think you guys are going to get disappointed. I always tell you guys, I usually put on a lot of filters, uh, both for my audio and my, my visual, my face, my camera, because, uh, I feel like... My actual face is a little intimidating and the way that I actually sound is a little scary as well. So I usually put a lot of filters on to, you know, to hide my identity from you guys. But yeah. It would be cool if I did. Hmm. Okay. Well, okay. I don't know. I mean, we can talk about it. Sure. So right now, all I'm really doing is I'm working on the knees and I'm keeping this one a little bit more subtle. So I'm adding in like subtle fat pads, um, adding in here, um, you know, some of that tapering here for the leg. But you'll kind of see here, all I'm really doing is I'm incorporating a lot of the rougher anatomy of the female body. And then we're going to be utilizing some of that there um, a little bit later when I stylize this a little bit more to kind of showcase some of the roundness of the forms that we can utilize. And then maybe we'll add in a bit of body fat to her. So that way I'll show you guys how to make a character, um, you know, appear rounded just through the overall shapes and stuff that we're working with. But overall, I wanted just to kind of show you guys how, uh, you know, you can keep things very subtle and still kind of convey an overall uh, type of shape motif. Not everything has to be super crazy and the proportions have to be super sharp or super boxy. Sometimes it can be nice and subtle. Uh, like what we have here. Let's see here. Um, you got a job? 
You didn't have it. You didn't have it hide for the job, right? Oh, you mean my face? Yeah. When I interviewed, I, it's funny because I, I actually hide my camera. So whenever I'm doing stuff at work, I always hide my camera because it's super distracting because my, my setup here, I'll show you guys really quick. My, my setup right here, this camera setting, if I, if I turn this on, whenever I'm on a zoom call at work, People get so distracted because they're like, yo, look at this dude's got a stream set up and everyone's got like their basic webcam look. And so I usually hide my face whenever I'm streaming or whenever I'm working because I don't know, I don't, I'm not trying to attract attention, you know, here on Twitch. Yes, I'm here to I'm here to, you know, captivate people and all that stuff. But. But yeah, no, whenever I'm working in the studio, I just hide it. It's just such a hassle. People are like, yo, that's a cool poster or this and that or tell me more about streaming. And I'm like, please, I'm just trying to get my scenes done. I'm just trying to clock in, clock out of work, you know. Yo, how's it going, Clop? Welcome back in. Got your attention now with my anime setup. Speaking of anime, this is a great time while I'm locking in here some of the rest of the forms. Um, there's a lot of you here today, so I want to know, guys. Give me your top three animes. Ooh. Top three animes right now. Hit me. Let's see. Top five? No, nah, top three. Top three. Uh, what is my job? Yeah, so for those of you uh for those of you wondering, I I I've given this intro a bunch, but I'll say it right now. Uh for those of you wondering, I do work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, right now, I'm prepping to work as a des uh, character designer on shows such as Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. Uh, but right now, specifically for uh, for Powerhouse Animation Studios, the studio I'm working at, um, I work as a character uh, character slash layout artist, and so I work on either I either work on taking storyboards and actually um, animating them or putting them onto frame. I also work on polishing stuff up for like Sakuga style animations, those zoom ins and stuff. We also do a lot of draw overs for our overseas partners to make sure that they're making stuff that looks good and stuff. And um, yeah, that's what I that's what I mostly do. So I draw a lot of characters doing cool things. Um, yeah, that's what I do right now. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen One Piece Fairy Tale. Okay, Vox Machina, dude. That's not an anime, but I also love it. Yes, Vox Machina is like, whew, ten out of ten. I still have to finish season two though. I've been so busy. Uh oh, let's not forget the other hand here. Whoops, my bad. Um, but anyways, I think we're mostly good here on um this character. I'm going to go ahead now and kind of build her up a little bit more to kind of give her more of a, uh, what's the word here? Uh, more of like a rounder shape design. So after I draw in this hand, give me a sec. I forgot to draw both of the hands actually. Forgot or intentionally avoided. Ooh. How many of you guys in the chat hide your hands when you draw your characters or have you have done that before? Put an F in the chat, guys. If you've ever drawn a character, you put their hand behind their back or you cut, you tried covering the character's eyes with the hair. You were like, you know what? I don't, I'm not really feeling like drawing both of the eyes today. So let me just, uh, let me just slap on a little bit of that emo hairstyle, a little bit of that, uh, wake me up when September ends type of hairstyle. You know what I'm talking about. Put an F in the chat. Y'all can't fool me with that. Uh, thank you for the follow too, Shavini Bondful. <laughs> Man's calling us out today. No one is safe on my stream today. Y'all are on the hit list today. Oh yeah, we we're talking about animes. Uh, my favorite. Okay, I can't. I can never give a top three because I think it's so hard to give a top three. But I would say my top five animes probably are gonna be uh, One Piece. I love One Piece a lot. Uh, let's see. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, not to be confused with the original, um, anime release because that one kind of went off the rails. Uh, let me think what else. Mm, Samurai Champloo, always Samurai Champloo. Yu Yu Hakusho for my childhood, childhood, uh, nostalgia. And then last but not least, just for beautiful animation quality and hypeness. I got to put Gurren Lagan over here. Cowards avoid hands. Exactly. 
unless it's intentional. But it's okay. We can all be cowards, okay? It's not. There's nothing wrong with being a coward out here. Um, but it is true. Oftentimes, I see that a lot of beginner artists hide their hands because they're afraid of drawing them. And I've done that plenty of times. I've been there many, many times, and I still do it sometimes as well, too. And even sometimes in animation, too. Sometimes we'll hide a hand because we're like, you know what? I'm kind of lazy. Let's just put the hand somewhere else. I have, I have been, you know, we've done that plenty of times where like we had a scene and we were like, you know, what if we just move the character a little bit lower so we don't have to draw the hands easy peasy. But generally speaking, even if you want to avoid hands, doesn't mean you should, uh, doesn't mean you should not know how to draw hands. Okay. And got to learn how to draw some of these things. And you know what, if we finish this early, we might actually, maybe I'll actually do, um, some hand stuff with you guys. Surely I'm a pro at hands by now. Um, I'm okay. I mean, there, there are still, I think hands are always hard, no matter your skill level. I think they're just going to be a, they're just a complex thing in general to draw. Uh, but I'm able to draw them. Yeah, I would say, um, a lot better than, than before. That's for sure. <laughs> what did I say? Huh? Am I sus too? Yo, yo, what did I say? Yikes. Ignore me. Ignore me, chat. Uh, thank you for the thank you for the prime sub. Mm mmm show. I'm hungry. Shivani and Groom and everyone else out here. Thank you so much for all the follows today. Dempsey roll. Ooh, classic. All right. Well, um, I would say this one right here is going to be the standard kind of female build. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of soften out some of the edges here to kind of help soften out the roundness. But you can kind of see here we're already incorporating some of the round forms of the character design just by incorporating stuff like rounder shoulders, uh, softer transitions here on stuff like the forearms, right? The curvature here of the, the legs and the glutes and all that stuff. So we're utilizing a little bit more of a subtle shape design here, but overall still giving it some roundness. Now, what I'll do here, because I think we have enough time for it, is I'll do a demo now where we actually add a little bit of body fat to our character, you know, kind of give it a bit more pizzazz. So that way you guys can kind of see also what it looks like when you have a bit more of a, a larger character and how you can utilize body fat as well as some of the other things we've done out here. So we've got here this kind of pose, but let's go ahead now and add some body fat um, to this character. Let me go ahead first and kind of color this one out really quick. But I hope this demo here was also helpful for you guys. Do, 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 do. There you go. Nice and easy. Um, nice and rounded shapes. There you go. There. You see two round forms. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yes, there are. There are some some rounded forms here. For sure. Shall I highlight them? Possibly. Okay. Merge this one out. And um, let's do... Oh, right. I'm going to do a quick color, right? So that way we can see the silhouette a little bit better. Um, it times out that the line's getting super blurred and vague. Um, that is actually some of the beautiful thing about, about, uh, what's it called? About Procreate is it actually does a really good job of retaining the lines, um, despite the amount of transforming and warping. Like if you do this on Photoshop or CSP, yo, it's crazy how much things get distorted so quickly. It's pretty wild actually. All right, so we got a lot of good top picks for animes. Let me ask you guys a question. This is an honest question, okay, chat? Don't don't riot on me on this one, okay? I know I know this is going to be people are going to be rioting here, okay? Let me ask this. Which anime was better? Digimon or Pokémon? I got to ask this question, which anime was better? Okay. 
Um, had you transformed the lair? Okay, let's see here. Uh, D and D. Do you plan on the maps yourself? I'm doing. I'm. I'm good, but tired because I gotta let the puppy out at night. Um. Oh, you're doing some D and D. Is that what you're saying? Or you're asking me about my D and D campaign? I have not started yet. I'm, I want to. Pokemon, huh? Interesting. All right, mods. You know who to ban. <laughs> I. You guys know my take. My stance will always be that I feel like anime wise, anime wise, I thought Digimon was way better. Always. The stakes were higher. The monsters were dope. The characters were nice and cool. If you're talking franchise in general, if you're talking franchise in general, obviously Pokemon takes the cake, okay? Nothing nothing really tops Pokemon when it comes to um, how much of a co contribution it's had, you know, in the franchise overall. But I don't know. I felt like the anime, man, man, story I think is better. Yeah. But, um, okay, we've got here this one. Let me go, I guess we'll highlight really quick. Sure, I'll highlight some of the basic shapes uh, for you guys one time. Uh, let's see here, hard light. And let's do like a green color. Okay, so here are going to be some of those rounded shapes here. Um, I'm going to be showcasing them a little bit here, but you can kind of see how you know, you can leverage rounder shapes here on the shoulders, for example. Um, the head here is going to be a little bit rounder. Um, we can actually make it even more round by just exaggerating that a bit more. Uh, but it's a bit more of a softer face there. Um, the something here is also rounder. We're not, I'm, you know, I'm talking about something there. Uh, but overall, I would say this torso is going to be, here's what I'll do. I'll go like this. right um and then we have here kind of like that hip portion is also rounder as well so these are some areas here that you can use again for kind of rounding out the shapes but you can actually kind of see a lot of it also in the way that we transition the lines too right so here you'll actually see how these lines kind of uh, curve out a little bit more so let me maybe we'll go like this right but I think you guys get the point here. So rounder shapes cannot necessarily just be like, oh, everything's got to be clearly a round shape or everything's got to be a clearly a triangular form. But sometimes it's in the lines that we use. So here I have a much more sharper transition uh, for, let's say, the forearm here and here. But for her, it's a little bit softer. So using here softer lines um, as opposed to maybe using something of harsher lines. Let me do that on a new layer here. So we're really using rounded forms here like this, rounded forms here for the legs, rounded forms here for the glutes, right? Rounded forms here for the shoulders and so forth. But all right, let's go in now and let's start actually piecing in a design where we maybe add a little bit of body fat here just to kind of showcase to you guys what it might look like if you have maybe a character with a bit of a larger build, right? So let's put away, we actually don't need her anymore. We don't need the, the Valorant girl anymore. I just wanted to keep her there as a bit of a, a demo to showcase. But let's go in and start building up a kind of a bit more of a bigger character. Okay. A bit more body fat. Let's see here. Give her some pants. It's too late. Uh, let's see here. Thanks for everyone coming in here. What's the ideal uh, iPad to get if you're trying to get into digital drawing? I noticed you had the 2020. Is that enough for what you're doing on a day to day? Yeah, I think so. You don't need a lot of uh, new stuff, to be honest. I mean, you can if you want to get it. Sure. But all right, let's go draw a slightly um, bigger character here with a bit more volume. And I think for this one, it'll actually be honestly not too hard. But what I'm what I'm going to say is when it comes to drawing out uh, characters, uh, where's my lines here? Uh, when it comes to drawing out characters with different body fat, it's actually not as simple as just adding in more thicker parts of the body uh, all over the place. Um, if you guys want to learn more about this, we actually covered, let me show you guys really quick, on day 
this is a this is actually a popular video on my YouTube channel, but day seven of my boot camp is where I actually talk about body fat distribution and where on the body you'll find different proportions and stuff um, increasing based off of how how much body fat a character has. Now, really quick, guys, I do run ads on my stream every hour. One's gonna be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. They do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. So if you do get an ad, thank you again. But if you don't want to get any ads, consider subscribing um, or using a prime sub out here. But thank you for the support either way and i hope to see you guys after um after the ad break okay but let's go back here now and let's talk a bit about rounding out the forms a little bit more and adding in a bit more kind of uh, volume so first i'm going to kind of give her a rounder shape of the face here we're going to give her a softer jaw as always um, and then we're going to go in and let's start adding in some body fat now the places where you'll actually find the most body fat is going to be one um, the back of the neck, you'll actually find some body fat there for the, for the female characters, but you'll also see here that oftentimes the, the body fat distribution is just a little bit more subtle. So here, instead of having a well-defined trap muscle, you might actually see that you might have maybe like a rounded form here, and then the arm kind of softens out here like so, right? So we're going to add some more body fat there already. This is already giving her just by changing here how that arm kind of moves, we're already getting here a bit of that roundness on the character. So here, let's kind of soften that out as well. Maybe we'll soften out the transition there between the, the shoulder and the trap muscle, right? So we're gonna kind of just do a little bit of that. Um, and then here, let's kind of add some, some more body fat as well too. So as you increase the body fat of your character, you're also going to be increasing here. Um, interestingly enough, the boobas are also going to be increased as well too. So we're going to add a little bit more volume right here. Okay. Uh, we got to draw the squish in the right places. Yes, 100% agree with that. Um, under the arm here as well is going to be like, so this armpit region is also going to be a pretty common area where you will see some, um, some body fat there. So right here, I'm going to kind of just add a little bit of that section uh, of body fat distribution. Let me actually increase the opacity just a little bit more so we can see it some more there. Um, well, you're actually going to do this on both sides, right? So we're going to add some volume there. And then we're going to also bring in a bit more here as well. There you go. And let's kind of go over the rest here. So interestingly enough, when it comes to drawing out here, uh, the torso and stuff, um, oftentimes I see this mistake where people will draw kind of, uh, these, these, uh, fatter characters. And again, they'll just make them like thick everywhere. But again, uh, depending on the, whether it's a male character or a female character, you'll actually see, for example, with the female character, oftentimes there's going to be a bit more fat around the center of the belly right here. And so you can kind of leverage some of that there. So again, we're going to be using this to help establish some roundness of our characters and our forms, right? Um, and so we're going to kind of go in here now. I'm adding in a little bit more volume there for this character. And then her waist is going to be probably where we're going to see the most volume, the most body fat change. Uh, because right here, uh, when it comes to the female, the glutes are going to be a pretty prominent area right here. So the glutes in the backside there is going to be the area where you're going to see a lot of volume going in for your character's forms uh and then here on the back side of the of the legs as well so the back side there the legs and the thighs all of that stuff and then here a little bit more on the tapering of um let me add some undies on her so you can kind of see the contour we're going to add here some volume on both sides there and then maybe we'll you know bring in a lot more volume on the kind of front outer side here of the legs like that okay good so far um and thank you for the follows everybody coming in here today welcome in hopefully you guys are enjoying the stream so far and 
Yeah. We've been uh we've been drawing a lot of characters. I think we've drawn four different uh this is our fourth body type here that we're drawing, which is I think insane. Now here, um really quick, I always want to remind people that even though a character might get bigger, the actual wrist itself doesn't actually change too much. Most of the volume here around the wrist is actually going to be pretty um uh, pretty tapered out because there's going to be no less muscle there and also going to be also just mostly going to be tendon and bone. So keep that in mind that when you're drawing out your character, yes, there's going to be some maybe additional thickness, but not not so much that it's going to actually change overall how the how that lower arm there looks like, right? But yeah, not bad so far. We're just adding in some volume. And so I think personally adding in the body fat and increasing the the fattier characters, all of it really just comes down to knowing uh knowing where to place the body fat on the body. And I think that can help make it more realistic. So here I'm going to add in some more fat because the fat's going to actually cover up the knee there quite a bit. So we're going to add some of that there and then we're going to kind of soften out that transition here as well. Um yeah, just adding in some additional thickness. And I'm not making it super, um, like, adding in too much body fat. So we could do an example for that, like, another day. I just wanted to show you guys how to subtly add some more thickness on here. Uh, just not, like, too much, you know. But here, we're going to add some uh, volume there. And again, I'm just softening out here the transition for a lot of these forms. Because that's really all that ends up happening is you kind of get... Uh, these areas here are going to get kind of thickened up a little bit there, and then you're good to go. But yeah, maybe, um, during my boot camp, my next boot camp, uh, I'll go over with you guys some examples where we actually really go kind of crazy. You know, I'll show you guys how to kind of give your characters more, um, more fat and kind of utilize the different shapes that we have there. Drawing these is always my enemy. I, I think knees can actually be really fun, but it does require a little bit of understanding for sure of how that joint area works because I think it's overall a a fairly complex area of the body. I think the knees are very hard to draw. Um, let me think other areas of the body that are hard to draw. Um, under the arm is also really hard to draw. So like when you draw a character, for example, um, and they have their arms raised, I think that can always be a difficult one to tackle. Uh, drawing for sure. Okay. Uh, I'm going to again keep her ankles and her feet kind of the same here because there's not going to be too much body fat that actually goes into this portion here of the uh, of the body. It's mostly it's just going to be the bone, tendon, and all that stuff. So the feet are going to be roughly the same. Like maybe you'll add a little bit of fat here to soften out the ankles just a little bit, but you don't have to do too much, right? You can kind of keep it nice and subtle there. Uh, but there you go. We've got here some rounded forms for the arms. Again, softening out these transitions. And then now we have here a little bit more of a rounded character, right? And then we can actually go in here if we wanted to. We can, you know, large increase some of the waist area a bit more. Knowing where to add some of that volume in can, again, really help make things so much easier uh, when it comes to drawing out the characters. Now, I'm going to add maybe a little bit of a clavicle here, but not too much. Just, just a subtle amount there. Uh, because now she has more body fat in that area. So we're going to kind of, uh, just subtly denote it, you know, there you go. Oh, thanks for the follows. Wow. So many follows today, Nuka and also F A R T also known as fart, I guess. All right, but if you guys have any questions while I'm working on this one, uh, let me know in the chat. This is probably the best time to ask me any questions while I'm going in here and just drawing out some of the details. But overall, I hope you guys do enjoy uh, the stream that we have out here and all the things that we've covered. Thank you so much for the Prime sub. 20 months. Sheesh. Thank you so much, Leah. Appreciate that. 
And also for those of you guys coming in here, um, this will be my last stream on Twitch this week. Uh, I'm going to be taking a bit of a long break to kind of just reset for the next boot camp and all that stuff and just overall take a break from working really hard teaching on Twitch. So I will be back again. Um, for those of you wondering, I'll be back again next Thursday. So about a week and a half from now is when I'll be making my return. We're going to be starting the next boot camp and it'll be fun. It'll be fun, but also very challenging. It'll be a, a bit different from what we covered on, on this boot camp. So this boot camp was very much like, here's the anatomy. Here's the perspective. Next boot camp will be very subjective. So I guess I can tell you guys a little bit about that if you guys are curious. Um, so for the next boot camp, guys, what we're actually going to be doing is I'm going to want you guys to actually pick out either a show, movie, game, or whatever it is that you find interesting um, and find the art style of interesting. And I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to do one style studies, but also we're going to go over how to draw different types of characters, um, different types of characters from, again, uh, young characters like children, how to draw teenagers, adults, elderly characters, how to draw monsters, all of that stuff. And I'm also going to show you guys how to study a style for those of you who want to maybe either work in the industry or you just like the style of a particular show, game, or whatever have you, right? But um, here we go. We've got here, ta-da, boom, body fat there added for this character. Not too bad at all. I don't think we did too much there to really change this character. So let me go ahead and kind of add a few kind of cleanups here to kind of make it look nice. But... Yeah, what do you guys think? Not bad, right? Once you kind of see how it works, um, it starts to make a little bit more sense, I feel like. Let me just add in here... Um, There you go. Um, you're curious to see what is in store for us. Oh yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun for me too, because I get to also work on actually drawing characters with you guys and not just drawing like these mannequins. Like I actually want to design characters with you guys, I think for the next one. Um, and so we'll design some young characters and all of that, different types of characters, old characters. Okay, but let me go ahead and um, color this one out just a little bit. And then I think we'll be good to uh, wrap this one out here. Okay. Arcane style. Arcane is pretty nice. I do like the arcane style for sure. The bleach style. That would be a good one. I do like the bleach style as well. But yeah, guys, feel free to ask me any questions right now um, if you got them. Out here, we're just drawing out all of these. Eh? What the heck? We're just drawing out all the little features right here. And let me go ahead and color this one out too. Let's go ahead and flip the canvas as well. Okay, we got all that going there. Oh, thanks for the sub, Miss Makoko. Appreciate that. Thank you for the three months. Sheesh. All right, let's go ahead and color this one. Multiply, 40%. Duplicate, motion blur. A little bit of spice. And there you go. And then on this layer, add some color. <laughs> next, yeah, catch me on the next boot camp where we will reveal, uh, we're going to reveal this character's Bankai. Yeah, there you go. Last time on KSM Streams. These were just nobody characters. But now, today, we will actually reveal their identity. 
that could be super dope i mean i'm honestly just super excited to draw characters with you guys i, I feel like that's gonna be just really fun uh overall um also my commands don't work today unfortunately guys i know um but if you guys are interested in the current boot camp again check out my youtube channel um Oh, apparently my YouTube channel link. Hold on, let me see. Here. Let me copy paste it. Um, but you guys can check out my YouTube channel here. This is where all the all the boot camp videos for the for the first boot camp is going to be uploaded, and then I will be releasing a art book, actually a, a digital art book that you guys can use to follow along with when it comes to the boot camp. Let me just go around here all the way. Boom, boom, boom. And boom. There you go. Um, and so for this one, uh, you can kind of see already the shape design that we went for here, right? It's a little bit more of that rounder shape here. Let me get that green color that we had. I want to use that same green color. Okay. There you go. Let's get this one going. Oh, wow. Thanks for the follows. Juan and also uh, Fukiel Kotoro. Welcome in, guys. Um, have I done a boot camp? Have I done a boot camp previously that talks about the thought process of doing a study of anatomy, animals, and objects? The thought process of doing a study? Maybe? I'm not too sure. Possibly, yes. So again, for this one, it's again, the same kind of idea, right? We're, we're not exaggerating it too much, but this is kind of like a semi-realistic round build for your character. You can kind of see here how we're utilizing a lot of those round shapes again to really convey some of that design overall, a little bit more subtlety, right? But um, yeah, that's kind of what I'll say there. All right, so guys, here is what we're gonna do. We've got here the so many different types of drawings that we've had today. Uh, we've got here this one, the, the mannequin one, and we've got here these two male kind of triangular versus boxy shaped characters. But I'm going to tell you guys really quick what the next boot camp is going to be about to prepare yourselves. For those of you who are here today, I want to share what the next boot camp is going to be about, okay? So as you guys know, we've taught I've taught here how to do anatomy. I've taught perspective. We've taught the basic forms. We've taught how to do posing for your characters. But now what we're going to be focusing on in the next boot camp is how to draw different types of characters. We're going to utilize the things that we've learned from the current boot camp to go over how to draw expressions, how to draw characters from different angles, how to actually draw characters that are young, old, fat, skinny, muscular, monsters, females, whatever, you know, all of those different things. And so it'll be another 30 day challenge. Again, you guys can join in, but I highly recommend you guys join the discord channel now. And, um, yeah. So with that being said, guys, um, do again, check out my, uh, check out my YouTube channel, Follow me here on Twitch, okay? Like, uh, click on that heart icon here on Twitch because that way you'll get notified from when I come back. Also, check me out on Instagram and stuff. I'm gonna miss you guys. Peace. See ya. See ya. Oh.